In today's video, I'm gonna tell you about the media source within OBS Studio. I'm gonna tell you about VLC Media Player and what you can do with that in OBS Studio. And there's probably gonna be a cat. Stick around, there, there'll be a cat. So we're gonna look at a media source. I'll click that. Just uh, we'll leave the name for now. It's not really a big deal. Uh, if you have multiple media sources, obviously start giving them names or else you'll get confusing really quickly. But uh, you'll see some options up in here. Now, some of these settings will look familiar if you saw my image and image slideshow. But here we'll start with, um, we can choose a local file. If you uncheck that, it's gonna give you some options for finding a network file. And I've never actually used that. So I'm not gonna be the authority to tell you on what to do specifically there. But we'll click local file, we'll browse. I'm gonna just pick one of these background videos that I use on my Twitch stream, which um, the link's below, but you can uh, check me out there. I do stream three days a week over on Twitch. You can ask me any questions you might have about this sort of thing, or just come say hi, I'd love that. Now, you can set the video to loop. You can restart the playback um, when the source becomes active. If you leave this box checked, then anytime you restart playback on the video, it's going to start from the beginning. If you uncheck the box, it's just going to start the video where you left off. Um, use hardware decoding when available. You wanna check this box. If your graphics card can decode it, you want it to. It's not going to do it every time, but if, it, if it's able to. So you do wanna check that box and the system will use it if it can. Show nothing when playback ends. So you can either leave it you know, hanging on a freeze frame or just go off screen when it's done playing the video. And you can close the file if it's inactive. So if you are concerned about memory or, or any issue like that, you can check that box to close it when it's inactive. You can adjust the speed of the video here and you can select a color range for the video. Now we've seen this box here about apply alpha in linear space. We talked about that in my image source video. Basically all that is is that that's going to affect which color space the computer is looking at the transparency channel in. We'll pick the video, we got the video picked there. So we've got a video picked, we've got our settings all right there, we'll click okay. So now it's just gonna show the video and like anything else, we can resize it. Um, and if we just wanna turn it off and stop showing it, we pause it there. We can pause or stop the playback of the video there and add filters or go into the properties. Sorry to interrupt, but if you're finding this video helpful, or if you just like hearing the sound of my charming voice, please hit the subscribe button, like the video, comment if you have any questions or just wanna say hi. Let's get back to it. Now, that's great, but what if you need to be able to play more than one media file? You could try adding multiple media sources and toggle them on one at a time, but that's not very efficient, that's kind of messy. Instead, there's a better option. If you do any work with video files or even just watching videos on your computer, you've probably heard of a program called VLC Media Player. And if you haven't, I am very, very honored that you have chosen your first day on the internet to watch my video. Jokes aside, VLC is a free, open source, and lightweight video player. Um, it's available on all, on all major platforms. It's also incredibly versatile. One of the things that has made VLC such a popular video player application, uh, despite the fact that it's, you know, got an arguably clumsy interface, which is my opinion anyway, is that it has the ability to play nearly any file type that you can conceive of. And I think in the years that I've been using the program, I can probably count on one hand how many files I haven't been able to open. And that was years ago when the program was still fairly new. Um, so there's a lot of great reasons to use VLC Media Player on your system in the first place. But if you have it installed, it's gonna be great to use with OBS. It's going to give you the ability to play nearly any type of audio or video file and make playlists. So you can have it playing not just movie files, but also music for a soundtrack that's playing in the background. So if you don't have VLC, I'll leave a link below. You can check that out. Otherwise, let's go, we'll click on VLC Video Source and just click OK. The first setting is going to be loop playlist and followed by shuffle playlist. Now in my experience shuffling the playlist, it still usually starts with the same first initial video, but uh, that could just be on my system. For visibility behavior, um, stop when not visible, restart when visible, or you can pause or always play when not visible. So kind of like the other one, just in a, just worded a little bit differently. Now, 
I'll just look at these other settings here. You've got network caching. So if you are loading a network file, you can play around with that. If, uh, if the file, if the video file you're loading has multiple audio tracks, then you can set which one is going to play uh, down here. And then uh, the same thing with subtitle tracks as well. If you have video files that have subtitle tracks in them. And if we go back up here, just like with um, our image slideshow in the previous video, we can add files um, or directories, or we can add a, a network URL, or we, or we can add a network path or a URL. So if I go back and I can add that same car wash file, but I can also... Add several files. And we've got our control control slider down here. We've got a control panel for the video here with this slider, so I can fast forward. I can skip ahead to another video. What you can do is just um, transform the transform the slideshow, control F to fit it to screen, and then all of your videos are going to be fit to the screen. Having the ability to add both audio and video files into a playlist, as well as the expanded file libraries that VLC has access to over the standard media source, make it a great program to have installed on your computer and to use in conjunction with OBS. Although the media source has its own advantages, especially if you are working with transparency, you might find that you'll have some issues using VLC that you might not have if you just use a standard media source. You can have multiple instances of a VLC media source running at the same time with videos and music, and it's not going to um, be a huge drain on your system resources. Thank you so much for watching. As always, you can catch me live on Twitch three nights a week over at twitch.tv slash streams. If you found this video helpful, you can leave a comment down below and let me know what, uh, what piece of advice helped you the most or if there's something that you might need some clarification on. Again, I will do my best to answer any comments that you leave. Hit the subscribe button and click the little bell so you don't miss notifications for any of my upcoming videos. And check the description below for links to any of the software I've used today or to links to my other social media channels. As always, I'm Roman with The Beardo Computes. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.